feet touch each other and your knees go wide. And they don't need to be really wide. You can just go from side to side like a seesaw a bit, or you can go up and down with your knees like a butterfly. Just to check where you are and to see what's happening. And also to just warm up the pelvis a little bit. From there, we go over to one side. So in this particular case, you go over to your left. So you lean over the inner leg and see how that feels if you need to put the cushion underneath there today or not. So if your outer side of your leg does not touch the floor, you need to put something under so it touches the floor. The other leg can be fairly upright, so don't, don't be too concerned about that, but you, you will have a vision of your foot of your upright leg turning a little, just, just, just thinking of that. And where we want to feel it, so we're leaning slightly forward, is over the back of the hip, where the hip meets the lower back. Do you feel that? So it doesn't need to, like my leg could go all the way down, but it doesn't make it any better. So it's really wherever your leg is. It's more like the leaning diagonally forwards that does it, and they're not holding in here. So just like thinking of the thigh rotating. Just breathing into that. And if you can breathe into your back, you can feel those muscles respond. Good. And then come into the middle. And we take the leg that was on the floor up. And without moving the other leg, rotate it around and bring the top of the knee towards the hip. So that might look every day a bit different. If you've been walking a lot, you might feel like you're hanging over to the side if it's really stiff. So just be wherever you are. It's okay if the hip is hovering. It's good to check where the hip is. How much gap do you have between the hip and the floor? Just take a little, a little check here. Fantastic. Going back up bringing your sole of your feet back together. And we go to the other side and we again just compare that. So that is how you set up your practice. And then you can decide, because then you know which one is this tighter side. You can decide where you would like to spend a little bit more time. And we're doing the same thing on that side. And if it needs a cushion, it needs a cushion. And if that side doesn't need a cushion, that's also fine. So really take every day new. Don't assume yesterday's hips are the same as today's hips. So it's that forward movement that gets a stretch in the top of the hip there. And breathe as if you could breathe into your kidneys. It's not a massive stretch. It's just an opening. It's just working with the SI joint and your rectospinal muscle. Okay. Taking the leg that was down on the floor up and turning the leg around, internally rotating. And then checking out that hip, how much space there is. And it's not about good, good hip, bad hip. It's about just seeing what's happening there. So there's a bit of a gap there. Good. Try to sit upright and imagine that your hip could go down. So rather than trying to get the hip down, leaning onto the hip, thinking of decompressing your side and letting the hip go away from your leg. And you can hold on too if you're kind of like feeling a little bit over, that's absolutely fine. Good. 
We're holding on to the hip bone, the actual hip bone, where your leg is hooked into your hip. The other hand is a support here next to your hip. And you slowly just travel, moving your, rotating your hip in and letting your chest go looking behind you. Anything on that journey is fine. So it's not like a destination that we're going for. We're going on to our own personal journey and just see, inhale, look behind, taking a hip with you, becoming aware of the hip moving by having our hand on the hip. Hand on the hip. So we're going in and out. In. I would recommend to do this at least five times. You're always welcome to do more. And try to again take every move you do, not like a duplication of the last, but what's new? What else can I invite here? When you're inhaling, see if you can pull your tummy in and up. And when you exhale, see if you can sit your hip down, staying tall. Because instinctively we, we think that the pose over where we did the big move is more valuable than the one returning. So we kind of like forget about really truly returning, anchoring our hip as much as we can. So both sides, it's a spectrum from the furthest here to the furthest on the other side that will make the joint move. And then for the next one, we will go in and inhale. And then we try to find the connection between foot and knee. Have your knee and your foot slightly together. But first you go into the previous pose, then you find this connection. And then you just breathe through, you inhale and exhale. And then I invite you to bring your elbow reaching along forward on the side of your ear. And then really work with your breath. Quite often we then have our hand that's on the floor completely jammed and all of our weight on our hand. Shift slightly back by pushing your foot into your knee and your knee into your foot, which switches more tummy muscles. Deep breaths. So you Tummy muscles and your organs and everyone have a little has a little bit of a twist there. Don't jam your shoulders at the bottom and don't jam your shoulders at the top. It's space for those ears. And we take another breath and then we come back. Focusing on our thigh, rotating out and us being as tall as we can. This rotated outward, this rotated out, and the waist lifted, a longer, a decompressed waist. Let's do that one more time. Make sure this hand is not holding all your weight. So we first move as far as we can, inhale, then we put the resistance on, which also switches on the glute on the back leg. And when we have that, we breathe some more and then we invite this extension and elongation through the armpit to the elbow. In most yoga poses, we would reach into the fingers, but into the fingers feels very different than reaching into the elbow. The elbow has more fascial connections into the side rib cage and into the tummy. We're having the arm straight, reaching from the fingers. We miss out on quite a bit of connection. I invite you to close your eyes so you can really feel your breath adding to this pose, adding another dimension, generous breathing into your ribs. And then slowly come back out. And on the way back, your focus goes down onto your hip and you rotate up.
staying tall and just checking under your hip again if anything has moved. And then we bring our soles of our feet together again and just move through there. And just maybe it just feels like there has been an oil can in the hip, <laughs> like a little spray of WD 40. Good. Wonderful. Bring your hands, you can take them like fists behind. And just rather than thinking of going forwards, thinking of arching your chest up. So and my I don't even think of my feet going in any different way, but as soon as I roll to the front of the sitting bones and I lift up, my legs stretch out a bit more. Push the little toe side of your feet together and keep your chin up. Now we do a very funny move, which is in our face. It's an E face. So we lift the chin and we do the E face to activate the throat muscles. E. That's it. Really working them, working the front muscle. Long inhalation, long exhalation. And then we come back in. Ah. Well done. 